welcome to another one of our introductory videos relating to temperature metrology. In this video, we're going to ask the question, what is a thermometry bridge? And then we'll introduce the ISTEC micro K thermometry bridges. What is a thermometry bridge? Well, a thermometry bridge is the best way to measure the resistance of a standard platinum resistance thermometer in the calibration laboratory. And laboratories will use bridges rather than DVMs or position thermometers as they offer ratio metric measurements and with that greater accuracy and the ability to see very small resistance changes. So with a position thermometer, uh, very simplistically, they work by passing a known constant current through the resistance, through the platinum wire. And then we measure the voltage and then from the measuring the voltage, we can determine the resistance and from the resistance temperature. And the limitation of this type of design is if there's changes in the gain and the amplifier, if there are any thermal offsets, as things change, it compromises the performance. And with a position thermometer, at best, we might get uh, an accuracy of a few parts per million. So good, but not good enough if we want to make the very best measurements we can. The bridges work differently. We compare one resistance to another. By measuring the ratio of an unknown resistor to a known resistance, we get a lot of benefits. Um, gain errors will drop out, uh, other things will disappear, and we're able to make measurements uh, much better than one part per million, down to perhaps 20 parts per billion, or maybe even slightly better. So why are they called bridges? Well, in, traditionally, um, it was a weak stone bridge which was used. Uh, Wheatstone bridges aren't really used in thermometry. Uh, AC bridges became very popular and uh, the circuit's slightly different. But these are the elementary circuits with this bridge which allows the ratio measurement. So, as I said, measuring ratio has got advantages. We can get better performance than can be achieved with a DVM or a position thermometer that measure the voltage developed across the resistance from known current. We just measure this ratio so we have a standard resistor, and we might keep that at a constant temperature. We have a calibration certificate, and we can compare the unknown resistance of the SPRT to the known resistance of the standard resistor. And then if we measure the ratio, multiply that by the resistance value of the standard resistor, we get the resistance of the SPRT. The older bridges could only display ratio. You can often see those in the laboratory with a number shown. Um, but newer thermometry bridges, they can compute and display temperature directly. So inside the bridge, there's um, a database containing the value of the standard resistors, probe coefficients, and uh, a modern bridge can display temperature as well as ratio. So in the second part now, I want to introduce ISTEX thermometry bridges, the micro K range. Now, our first models were intended for secondary laboratories. And they were introduced in 2006. At that time, the performance was 0.4 or 0.8 ppm. They were very well received and the sales quickly grew. In 2010, we introduced higher specification models and we used a new technique of parallel analog processing, which was able to reduce the noise um, to new performance levels. And since we introduced these models, many of the National Metrology Institutes around the world have been using micro K replacing older bridges that have become unreliable. And we did receive the Queen's War for Enterprise, the innovation category for the development of micro K. So we have different models. With a thermometry bridge, we can make these precision measurements with an SPRT. But the micro K can also measure thermocouple and thermistors. Uh, we've got three channels, and it's widely seen as being the best bridge for SPRTs. So our higher performing models, Micro K Gold 17125, typical clients for those are National Metrology Institutes and Research. We can get an accuracy of 30 parts per billion over the whole range, uh, better at specific ratio values. And then we've got more affordable models, which are commonly used in uh, commercial calibration laboratories, oceanographic, uh, many applications, and sales a lot larger. The performance is still very good, um, sort of 250 or 500 parts per billion, uh, but the costs for these models, um, they're much more affordable than the primary models. 
All the iStep Micro K models can be expanded uh, with the micro scanner. You can add a maximum of a further 90 channels. Uh, we figured more than anyone would ever need, but we've got one client using uh, 90 channels. And each of those channels can be individually um, programmed. You can configure an individual keep warm current. There's always a constant current flowing through the SPRT. And you can configure the channel uniquely for the sensor type, uh, the number of measurements per sample units. Each, each channel can be individually configured. And we believe our micro is very special and like to tell you about three key advantages. One is performance. We are confident that we have the world's most accurate thermometer bridges. An independent evaluation at NMI does demonstrate the superior performance of the micro K models. And if you ask us, we can steer you towards some of those reports. Also, we've got performance with value. The higher end micro K models are much more affordable uh, than competing models. That's made possible with a new type of A to D converter and that helps deliver the distinguishing performance of the micro K and we license that technology from the National Physical Laboratory in the UK. Second thing about the micro K which we're very proud of is completely drift free uh, which makes it unique. So in ratio measurement all the models of the micro K are drift free. That's because we've got um, a substitution topology and we've got papers on that which we can share with you. So AC bridges, um, inside an AC bridge there are little potentiometers which you can adjust the filters and things. Uh, they move over time and need recalibration. Other modern bridges might have cell calibration, but the micro K is by design drift free. Where there's no calibration in terms of the ratio accuracy of the micro K. It's just something that comes from the design of the instruments. And there are no adjustments in software or hardware. And the third advantage of the micro K, uh, we wanted to support all the thermometer types using a calibration laboratory. So at the design stage, we decided we'd include voltage measurements so that we can measure thermocouples as well as SPRTs, PRTs and thermistors. So micro K is easy to use. It's operated from a large touchscreen display. You can plug in a, by a USB, a mouse and or a keyboard. That makes data entry easier. And all the micro K models are built in data logging. Let's take a, a walk through on how we might measure ratio measurement with an SPRT. It's very simple, connect the SPRT, choose the range, choose the reference resistor, set ratio, and we've got uh, optional values for the statistics. Let's see how that looks. So I've got a default PRT, I don't need any conversion here. I want the 125 ohm range at 1 milliamp. I'm going to use the internal 100 ohm reference resistor. So here for units, I just select RT over RS, and we're good to go. Micro K Gold 17125 is just two ranges: 125 millivolts and 500 millivolts. Micro K Gold also has a 2.5 volt range, and the Micro K will automatically set the range um, as we set those values. In my example, at 125 ohms at 1 milliamp. Micro K sets the range appropriately automatically, making life easy for us. Let's see how we make a temperature measurement. It's pretty much the same as before, uh, but now we need to add the SPRT calibration coefficients to the Micro K's database. And then we can select temperature, and the Micro K will compute the temperature from the stored coefficients. So um, from the calibration certificate for the SBRT, we need to take the coefficient and we need a recent value for the resistance of the SBRT at the water triple point. So the number of coefficients we need will vary with the temperature range. Uh, this chart here shows the different coefficients for the different ITS90 sub-ranges. So in this example, we're going to go from the water triple point to the freezing point of indium. Or we just need a single coefficient, A the water triple point resistance of the SPRT. Uh, so I can take those from my calibration certificates and pop those into the micro K. So I select edit thermometers, pa password protected, the default password is 1234. We can of course change that to our own value in the settings. Uh, and now I can add a new SPRT to the database. So in the fields here I can put the thermometer name, this case I'll just put a 909 example 
There's no limit to the number of SPLTs we can store. Uh, now I can put in the manufacturer's name. Uh, so I don't have to, but it's, it's a nice touch. Uh, 909 is our secondary SPLT. So I'll just type in ISTAC in here. And of course we want the serial number, the unique serial number for, for the thermometer. If I put the calibration due date in, I can get the Micro-K to tell me when the SPLT needs to be recalibrated. It doesn't affect the, um, the, the calculation, of course, but it's good, good, good housekeeping. I like to do that. Now for the conversion, I'll choose ITS 90. Go for coefficients, and I just need to put the A value in here, which is from our calibration certificate. Once I've got that value in, I'll also put in the, the water drill point value. If I was using a wider temperature range, you know, I'd have more coefficients to enter. Uh, so I've said in this example, we just need a single one here, and then the resistance of the SPLT at the water drill point value. And that's it, we're good to go. I'm going to put in the minimum maximum temperatures here. This doesn't affect the calculation again, but if the thermometer exceeds the temperature range that I put in here, I'll get a message. And I, I might like that to get a message if the SPLT has been hotter or colder than I expect it to be. So now I've stored that SPLT into the database. So what I need to do is to go into the settings here and choose the thermometer. So now I can go into the database, here's all the thermometers I've got, um, here's my example, and I can now set my units to degrees C, um, and you can choose which reference resistor I'm going to use the internal 100 ohm. Just changing this to degree C for my ratio. And now I'm good to go. If I go to the single view, I can get my temperature value. Um, that, will, that graph will update over time. So very easy to use. Um, we can choose between single and multi view. In single view, we just see one channel, and then on the multi view, we can see uh, three channels. If I've got the scanner connected, the channel three position will update uh, with the most recent channel. And here you can see the settings. Uh, so it's, 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 it's a simple to use instrument despite its complexity. We've got more uh, video walkthroughs uh, on YouTube um, showing various things. Um, so if you're using the Micro K, want to see how it works, do take a look at those. The same sort of thing as the video walkthrough of using the micro K. It's easy to use with remote operation as well. It's often easiest to use the inbuilt temperature logger and just export the data on USB, but you can operate the micro K uh, remotely. Micro K Gold 7125 of Ethernet as well as IEEE RS232 and USB connections. Micro K 250 and 500 don't have Ethernet. They do have IEEE, GPIB, RS-232 and USB. And with the Micro K Gold 17125, it's nice that we can use a remote display. Uh, so let me show you how that works. A little utility. I will connect to the Micro K over the network. And then I can operate the Micro K remotely from the desktop PC. It's just logging in. And now you can see it's pulled up the screen from the micro K and I can operate the micro K uh, from the desktop PC. Just need some simple downloads and uh, the links are shown. So the micro interface is all the models have got serial RS-232, IEEE 488 and USB host. You can communicate with the micro K using simple Skippy style commands. You can type those into a terminal program and our own software CalNotepad 
iCal Easy Vlog that I can use to communicate with the instruments. Uh, some commonly asked questions, what about the reference resistors? If I were to measure the resistance ratio of an SBRT, how should, how should I select the reference resistor? Well, let's look at some examples. First example, primary metrology. So here I might want to measure the temperature of a fixed point cell or measure the resistance of an SPRT in a fixed point cell. So our measurement accuracy will come from the uncertainty of the bridge and the uncertainty of the reference resistor. So for primary metrology, it's usual to select an external reference resistor, and the highest quality resistance we can find. Uh, they can be calibrated to uncertainty for around 50 parts per billion, the temperature maybe 12.5 micro K. Now I want to temperature control that reference resistor. So that's the example for primary metrology. What value should it be? With the micro K in general, we would say a value equal to the highest resistance that we measured. So for a 25 ohm SPRT, if we take that to the aluminium point at 660, that's equivalent to about 85 ohms, so we could select a 100 ohm reference resistor. In my second example here, I'm thinking about calibrating, to, um, calibrating a resistance thermometer against an SPRT in an oil bath. So here no reference resistor is needed because we can measure the ratio between the two resistance thermometers. Um, so we can directly compare one thermometer to the standard thermometer. So I don't need a reference resistor in this case. And then the third example is using the internal reference resistors. So the micro K has a range of internal resistors. And they're useful for many applications, but you wouldn't use those for primary metrology like calibrating a fixed point cell or calibrating an SPRT to the lowest uncertainties. Uh, and if these are being used to make measurements, the resistors will need recalibration. So the micro K is drift free and ratio measurement, but the internal standards will need calibrating perhaps once a year. And we've got more information about that on the FAQ link. So these uh, reference resistors or the primary bridges may not have internal references. If you visit uh, labs with old AC bridges in the past, you would see a little pile of external resistors. Uh, they, they use a bulk foil resistor, very good quality, but they're not useful for primary calibration. But rather than have those external devices, we've built them into all our micro K models to make the micro K easier to use and more flexible. And well, finally, we're here to help. Uh, we believe we have the best thermometer bridges for SPRTs. We we'll really enjoy discussing applications um, and thinking about how bridges can be used. So if you've got any questions at all, please do get in touch. We'd be delighted to help. As always, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you'll be kept up to date with new videos as they become published. Thank you.